And it's time once again for the Renewed Covenant Fellowship Bible Study Program. I'm your host, Brother David Jones. Behind the camera is my wife, Miss Sharon. And we appreciate you being with us today. We hope that Father has been greatly blessing you this week. Hello, Miss Suzanne. Appreciate you joining us. You're the first one on tonight. And uh, we know others will, will be joining us just real soon. It's been a busy week, and we're glad that it is time for Sabbath time rest again. We're going to be getting into the Word real good tonight and real quickly, and so we're looking for Father to do a great work in our lives. We're hoping that uh, God will meet with us tonight in spirit and in truth, and we're looking for uh, a touch of, of uh, the grace and mercy of Almighty God. Uh, we have a lot of things to pray about. Uh, we've got some things uh, that are, are heavy on our heart. We've got some praise uh, uh, reports, uh, some things we're going to uh, give God the glory on, and we're going to continue to pray for some things. We got one of our one of our our watchers from time to time, Brother Jeremy uh, Moffat, his wife Christine, uh, their daughter just came out of surgery, and uh, we praise the Father for that. Uh, she uh, f 15 years old and having gallbladder issues, having gallstones, and uh, so they just uh, sent a message, and uh, she just come out of surgery. So we're so thankful for that. Amen. And then of course, Brother Keith Pardell uh, was out working today and got to meet a family up in. In our in our neighborhood or should I say in the neighboring county uh, looking for the father's will and uh, he had an opportunity to share the truth with them and we're hoping and praying that they'll come to our meeting tomorrow looking forward uh, to what father has for them and for us and so we're excited about the upcoming meeting we're excited about the upcoming fall feast and we are excited to be with you here today uh, we know that uh, the eastern seaboard we praise the father for the fact that we law uh, we dodged the bullet so to speak uh, did not get uh, any major uh, damage in our area from the hurricane I know there's some uh, minor damage in some areas there are some uh, uh, major issues out on the Outer Banks uh, along the areas of Myrtle Beach and Charleston, South Carolina. But uh, in our area, we had no damage and uh, the majority of the states uh, fared well. And so we're so thankful for our Heavenly Father for taking care of us uh, and looking after us. And so we're, we're so, so glad that Dorian uh, was not harsh to us. Amen. Uh, and so we praise the Father for that. We praise the Father for His mercy and for His goodness. Well, we're going to pray tonight and we're going to ask the Father to meet with us in great power. And uh, hello, Miss Leona. How are you today? Shabbat Shalom to you too, sister. Uh, and we're going to uh, ask Father to, to bless our meeting. We're going to be continuing in the book of 1 Corinthians. So if you've got your Bible, make sure to have your Bible. Uh, make sure to have uh, pencil and paper and make sure to take good notes. Uh, and uh, we, we love getting into the scriptures. We love getting into the word. And so we're looking for uh, great things for the Father, uh, for the Father to give us tonight. And so let's pray. Uh, and ask the Lord to meet with us in great power. Do remember to pray, uh, continue to pray for Brother Moffat and his family. Also for this family over in Lexington, we're praying for them to uh, 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 really seek after the Father, what uh, Brother Pardell was able to meet with them, and uh, looking for great things to happen in the future. Continue to pray for each other's ministry, and pray for the lost. Pray for the lost. Pray that Father will open up the eyes of the blind and touch the hearts, even those that are within local churches and uh, uh, local religious organizations, that they will be called out uh, and become a part of what Yahweh is and come out from the world and be separate, says the Lord. And so let's do pray uh, for, for each other, okay? So let's pray tonight. Father, we do love you. Thank you for your goodness and for your mercy, for the great week of work. Father, for the safety and travel. Father, for the uh, Father, for looking after us on the road and as we were training this week in the mountains we do ask you father in the name of yeshua messiah father to meet with us tonight that you would hide us father in the center of your will father we pray that you'll forgive us of our failure that you'll bring our sin to our attention that we may repent of it father and turn from our wicked ways and turn back into your way father we do thank you for your mercy and kindness thank you father uh, for the minimal impact from the hurricane we ask 
ask you, Father, that you will bless those and be with those that are suffering loss tonight. We pray, Father, also for the Moffat family. We thank you, Father, for giving the doctors wisdom. We do pray for Ashley that you would touch her body and help her, Father, in this recovery. We pray, Father, also for continuing to pray for Miss Lisa Wild that you'll continue to touch her as she recovers from her surgery. Uh, Father, also for, for others that have special needs, Father, special requests, and Father, for this family, Father, that Brother Keith was able to minister to today, we ask you, Father, that your will be done. Father, that you would lead them into truth, that they would seek after you and have a hunger and a desire to know the truth. We thank you for this ministry. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to be on the air. And we ask you most of all that you would be with us tonight and speak to our hearts. Fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit that you may uh, be honored and glorified by all that we say and do. And we'll give you thanks and praise and glory for it is in the name of Yeshua Messiah, our Master and our Savior, we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Well, let's get right to the, the Bible study and uh, we'll get right into the word tonight. I'm going to make an adjustment on my camera, just, uh, just a brief adjustment if I can without dropping it. Uh, my, my luck, I would drop it and make a mess. So uh, we'll make that adjustment right there. All right, good to go. And uh, so in 1 Corinthians, I'm going to start back again in chapter 1 and verse 30, and we're going into chapter 2. We're going to read the entire chapter, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to read parts of it from the Peshitta. And the Peshitta, if you don't know, the Peshitta uh, was the uh, uh, Aramaic of the New Testament. And it is what our English Bibles come from. Uh, I have a translation, an English translation of the Peshitta. And I'm going to read that. And it's a little bit more modern English, a little bit easier to understand. Uh, but I'm going to read it first from, from, uh, from my Bible. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 30. And then follow along all the way through chapter number 2. Uh, but that of him, but of him are ye in Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ, who of Elohim is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in Yahweh. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of Elohim. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Yeshua Messiah, or Jesus Christ, and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness, and in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power." That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of Elohim. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of Elohim in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which Elohim ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the master of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which Elohim hath prepared for them that love him. But Elohim hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of Elohim. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of Elohim knoweth no man but the Spirit of Elohim. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of Elohim, that we might know the things that are freely given us of Elohim. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 
But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Elohim, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of Yahweh, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Messiah. Hello, Brother Paul. Welcome to the broadcast tonight. Now, when we look at this second chapter, it is just a continuation of Paul's introduction in the first chapter when he's talking about not speaking with man's wisdom. If you go back into chapter number one, and you'll notice there in verse number 25, he said, because the foolishness of Elohim is wiser than men, and the weakness of Elohim is stronger than men. And then he says in verse 27, but Elohim had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and Elohim had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised hath Elohim chosen yea and things which are not to bring to naught things that are and so it's just a continuation of his original uh, opening statement in this particular letter and he says uh, that he did not come uh, in man's wisdom, but he came in the wisdom of the Spirit in order to share with us and to speak the things that were given to us in a mystery. He says there in verse number, verse number uh, uh, seven, he said, but we speak the wisdom of Elohim, or the wisdom of Almighty God. He said, in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which Elohim ordained before the world under our glory. Now, I believe firmly that there are things that are still hidden uh, in mystery that have not been completely revealed to God's people. And uh, the things that Paul is talking about are being revealed slowly and surely over the centuries. And now, of course, in our generations, we have the... Um, uh, the avenue and the medium uh, of the internet and we have uh, the information uh, avenue and the information highway right at our fingertips. All we got to do is Google something or Bing something and we can find the answer just real quick. You want to know how to fix a car, go on YouTube and watch a YouTube video. You want to find something out about a medical issue, Google it and you can find out that issue. And if you want to know something about scripture, all the information from the last 2,000 plus years has been downloaded onto the internet by various sources and various students of the word uh, and uh, they have put that information on there and the mysteries are being revealed right to us. But Paul, speaking of these things, he, he talks about this in verse number nine and I want to focus tonight on verse number nine. Uh, hello, Miss Shelley. Appreciate you joining us tonight. I want to focus on verse number nine, but I I want to go back to the Peshitta and I want to read this uh, from the Peshitta uh, and sort of give us a, a sort of a, a, a introduction, if you will, or uh, a little bit more common language that might help us to understand. I'm going to start in, verse, in chapter number two and verse number one. He says, but when I came to you, my brethren, I did not proclaim to you by magnificent speech, neither by scholarship, the gospel of the mystery of God. Neither did I judge myself as knowing anything among you except Yeshua, the Messiah, even him as he was crucified. And I was with you in much fear and trembling, and my message and my preaching were not in the persuasiveness of the words of philosophy, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and power. Now, how many times have we seen, hello, Miss Mickey, appreciate you joining us tonight. How many times have we seen and have heard preachers uh, and, and ministers try to uh, 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 in, uh, entice us and to impress us with great swelling words of philosophy? And uh, we we hear that all the time and, uh, and preaching words which we do not understand, making themselves uh, sound so wise and so eloquent. And Paul, Paul's not coming to us like that. He said, I'm talking to you with the wisdom that comes from God, not the wisdom that comes from man. Hello, Brother Doug. And he goes on to say here in verse number eight, he said, which none of the rulers of this world knew, for if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. 
But as it is written, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, uh, uh, and upon the heart of man has not come upon that which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit, for the spirit searches into everything, even the depths of God. Now we'll stop right there just for a minute, and we're going to focus tonight on verse number nine on the topic of those that love Yahweh those that love Yahweh. Now notice what Paul says here. Paul, uh, again, this is continuing in his introduction. I believe that all of this is based upon his introduction. If you go and study the letters of Paul, you'll find that, that he has an introduction section, he has a main topic section, and then he bookcases the end with a, re with a reminder of what he started with. You can find that in Ephesians, you can find that in the book of Romans, and you can find it in the book of Galatians and you'll be able to find it here in the book of 1 Corinthians. And here he says, uh, he's talking about the difference between man's wisdom and God's wisdom and God's wisdom, uh, Elohim's wisdom, Yahweh's wisdom comes from his spirit, not from education, not from philosophy, not from books, not from book learning, not from, as my father-in-law says, from schooling. It is strictly from the spirit of of our holy righteous creator. And he says in verse number nine, but as it is written. Now, how many times have we read that verse of scripture? Miss Sharon, how many times do you think we, that, that over the last 30 years we've read that verse of scripture? Many times we have read that verse of scripture, but you know, you know what? It never, never dawned on me to look where it came from. Never dawned on me. It comes from Isaiah chapter number 64 and verse number four or five. So let's hold our finger there in 1 Corinthians and let's go to Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64. Those of you who don't know the books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Isaiah. Amen. You know, humor helps. That's, that's what they say. So Isaiah chapter 64 and verse number four. <clears throat> The prophet writes, he says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O Elohim, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth on him. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness, those that remember thee in thy ways. Behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned, in those is continuance, and we shall be saved. Isn't that a great verse of scripture? That's a great verse of scripture because that's what Paul just quoted from. Now remember in verse, uh, in chapter number one, he quoted from the book of Jeremiah. And now he's quoting from the book of Isaiah and he's talking about the same thing, talking about that which comes from the Father. Uh, in chapter number one, he talked about glorying in knowing the Father. And now he's talking about all of the things that Elohim has prepared for those that do what? Love him. Those that love him. Now, I heard a song. <clears throat> I was scanning the Sirius XM channels uh, yesterday while I was driving home. I had a four-hour drive uh, from the mountains back to the house and scanning the channels and trying to find something to listen to. And, and I landed on the uh, Enlightened Radio Christian station. And I was listening to a song by the Hoppers. And uh, uh, it was written uh, by a different songwriter. And it was talking about blame it on love. And it talked about the unconditional love of God. Unconditional. N nothing we have to do. Unconditional love of the Father. And I got to thinking to myself, you know, there's a lot of scripture in the Bible that talks about um, uh, that God loves, uh, 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 that, that we love him because he first loved us, but also the fact that he loves those that love him. When we look back at the covenant and we understand that the covenant will be renewed in our hearts and the laws and commandments will be renewed in our heart, there were conditions 
There were conditions. Hey, guess what? There's conditions to salvation. There's conditions to eternal life. And there are conditions to the love of a creator. There's conditions. It is not something that just comes out of the sky and just says, well, God loves you regardless anyway. I find that hard to believe. And I challenge someone to, get, to give me scripture and show me I would like to see that. I would like to see that, and I will. I, and I will change. I will change my my uh, my opinion. But when we look at the scripture, the scripture is very clear that I has not seen nor ear heard, neither entered the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love Him. Yahweh has not prepared the blessings for those that hate Him. I I, I saw a post on Facebook one time that talked about the fact that. That, uh, that Yeshua, Jesus, that Jesus Christ died for even the one that would hate him and go to hell. And that's not true. Yeshua's death has no value for the one that hates him. Yeshua's death has no value and his crucifixion has no value to that one who will reject him. It's no value whatsoever. But Yeshua's death has great value to that one who will receive him and believe on him and have faith in him and have trust in him and walk in accordance to his way. Yeshua's death has great value. And the Bible is very clear here. Uh, if you notice there in 1 Corinthians, I has not seen, ear heard, uh, neither has ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which Elohim hath prepared for them that love him. But Elohim hath revealed them unto us by spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things. And so I want to share with you tonight just some thoughts from the Bible. What the Bible says about those that love Yahweh. Or those that love God, those that love our Heavenly Father, those that love our Creator. And we're going to look at some scriptures tonight and we're going to see what the Bible says concerning those that love Yahweh. Let's look in Psalm chapter 31 and verse number 19. <clears throat> Psalm 31 and verse number 19. Psalm 31 and verse number 19. <clears throat> The Bible says in Psalm 31, verse number 19, Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Those that trust, those that fear, the things that Father has laid up, the goodness that He has laid up for those that fear Him, for those that trust. Let's look also in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 6 and verse number 5, a common verse of Scripture with which we have read. Common verse of Scripture which we have read, Deuteronomy chapter number 6 and verse number 5. And thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. This is also repeated in Matthew chapter number 37 where Yeshua, Jesus, says in Matthew 22 and verse number 37, says, Yeshua said unto him, Thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And so when we look at what the Bible says, those that love Yahweh. Now let's look at what Romans chapter 8 says. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 8. The Bible says, so then, uh, let's see, I'm sorry, Romans 8, 28, I'm sorry, 8, 28, Romans 8, 28, Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love Elohim, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, when you look back at 1 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter number 3, and you see the word love. The word love in the New Testament in this particular passage is the, is the Greek word agapio. It's, it's Strong's number 25. And it literally means to prize or to delight in. 
that, that the Father is like a prize to us, that which we delight in. That's, that's what it means to love Him. He's like a prize. He's, he's, he's the grand prize. And it's something that we take great delight in. That's what, that's what true love is. Many people say that they love the Father and that they love God, but yet, yet the love of the Father is not in them. They're, they have anger and they have bitterness and they have strife uh, and they have faithlessness and lawlessness. And it's those that love the Father and those that exhibit their love for the Father that the Bible says uh, that things that have never been seen, things that have never been heard of, things that have never been entered into the heart of man, Father has prepared those things for those people who, who prize and delight in him. They prize and delight in him. Is that a good word or what? Miss Sharon's looking at me. They prize and delight in him. Now there's a people, a lot of people that love the thought of God. They love the thought of Jesus, the, the thought of Yeshua. They are enamored with the uh, uh, a possible association uh, and the, 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 uh, uh, the dreaming and the thoughts of heaven and the thoughts of eternal life. Uh, they are, are, are uh, 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 overcome, I guess you might say, with uh, uh, excitement over, over the thought of God. But how do they exhibit their love for God? Oh, well, well, folks go to church uh, and folks, uh, folks read their Bible uh, and, uh, and people tithe and, and they, they dress right and they look right and they go to the right places uh, and they, uh, they, uh, they, don't, they don't drink, smoke and, and, and cuss and chew and they don't run with those that do. Uh, and they do all those things and all those things are fine and good. But what does the Bible tell us? how to exhibit our love for the Father. What's the Bible say? There's a lot of religion things, but what does the Bible tell us, okay? If we say that we love God, what is the definition of love and how is love defined? Is it defined by man's wisdom, as Paul says, or is it defined by the Spirit? Defined by God's Word. Remember what he said there? He said, but Elohim, or God, hath revealed them to us by His Spirit. Paul said before, before, said not in man's wisdom. He said up there in verse number, verse number, um, let's see, verse number eight, uh, verse seven, he says, but we speak the wisdom of Elohim in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which Elohim ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world do. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the master of glory. If they'd have known it, they never would have crucified Yeshua because they'd have known that he was Yahweh in the flesh and they would have known that he was the Messiah. See, remember what they had. What did they, what the people that Paul's talking to, is everybody out there still with me? I see numbers on the board, but think about this. Think about this. What was Paul preaching from? I give you I'll give you a few seconds to answer. What was Paul preaching from? What was Peter preaching from? What was John preaching from? What was James preaching from? What did they have? Anybody want to take a stab? They had the Tanakh. That's exactly right. They had the original covenant. They had they had the uh, the five books of the Torah. They had the Psalms. They had the the prophets. They had the writings, and that's what they had. They didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They didn't have Romans and Acts and First, Second Corinthians and 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 Philemon and Philippians and Colossians, Ephesians, Galatians. And they didn't have all that stuff. All that was being being given, and it was that's right, Miss Leona, the Old Testament. And they were this, these things were being revealed to them. That's right, the Torah. These things were being revealed to them. And Paul said that we're not coming in man's wisdom, but we're coming in the wisdom of Elohim. We're coming in the wisdom of Almighty God. And and what, so so when we talk about that, man has his idea of how we love God. I find it very interesting, and 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 I know I I know many have already probably seen this, but our president, President Trump, says that the Bible is his favorite book of the Bible or, or favorite book to read, but he can't tell you one verse of scripture that he's memorized. 
out of his favorite book. <clears throat> Man has their ideas of what it looks like or what it means to love God. What, is, what does the Bible say? What does God say? His criteria for loving him. Well, let's look at the word of the Lord. And we'll, we'll, work, or we'll, we'll go back to the book of Deuteronomy. We'll start back there. We'll start back in Deuteronomy, and we'll start back in Deuteronomy chapter number 6. What does God say that it is required for him to, uh, for us to love him? Deuteronomy chapter number 6, of course, this is the Shema. <clears throat> this is the Shema. Verse number 4, here, a see. Um... Verse number three, hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as Yahweh Elohim of thy fathers has promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim is one. And thou shalt love, Yah love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently to thy children, shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And so God tells Israel how they are to love Elohim. They're to love him by keeping his words on their heart. Remember? Remember, it was always, Miss Sharon, it was always to be on their heart. Was it wasn't about it wasn't about tablets of stone, but it was about being on the heart. And he says, the way you're going to love me is by keeping these commandments and placing them upon your heart. Now, let's go back. Let's go to the New Testament. We'll go to the book of John and we'll start with the words of the master. John, and we'll start in, let's see, I got, I got several of them. I was going to start in one and I may start in another one. Hold on just a second. Uh, we're going to start in John. 842 John 842 Now we are reading the words of the master we're not reading the words of of uh, uh, John or Paul or Peter or, or or Joshua or Moses we're reading the words of Yeshua Elohim in the flesh okay <clears throat> He says there in John chapter 8, verse 42, he says, Yeshua said unto them, If Yahweh were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from Elohim, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. If Yahweh were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from Elohim, neither came I of myself, but he, but he sent me. So, if we believe that Yeshua is Yahweh, is the Word made flesh that dwelt among us, John chapter number one, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word of uh, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, or the Word was Elohim. The same was in the beginning with Elohim. Everything that was made was made by Him. Nothing that was made uh, 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 was not made except by Him. He was the light that shineth into the world, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we're hearing from the words of Yahweh in the flesh, Elohim in the flesh, okay? That, and I know people want to argue about that. That's fine. You know, I'm, I'm not here to argue. This is not, not an argument session. Uh, my preaching time, if you want to argue your point, you get your own preaching time and you start your own uh, uh, YouTube channel and you can have your own preaching time. Amen? So in John 14, remember we're looking at what the Bible requirements are for loving God, loving Elohim. John 14 and verse 15 if you love me, keep my commandments. Remember, remember, let's go back again. Who is Yeshua? 
Who is Yeshua? Yeshua is Elohim in the flesh, the Word made flesh. That means He is the manifestation of the Creator. <clears throat> Now, people would say, well, how can that be? Well, you, you don't believe that God can be in multiple places at one time? That he can hear the prayers of a saint in the Philippines and hear the same prayers of a, uh, of a saint in North Carolina at the same time and, a, and the prayers of a saint in Australia and the prayers of a saint in England? And a, If he can do that, why can't he manifest himself in mul multiple places at multiple times? If you love me, keep my commandments and in the same chapter in verse number 21 he goes on to say he said he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he that word keepeth means guard to guard them he it is that loves me and he that loves me shall be loved of my father now isn't that interesting there's conditional love am I am I mistake am, am I missing something Am I missing something? That's conditional love. Conditional love. Yes, God loves his creation and he has a desire for his creation to prosper. But the Bible's very clear. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me and he that loves me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Conditional love. You say, well, that means we got to work for our salvation. No, we don't. No, we don't. All we have to do is be obedient to what the Father tells us to do. Yeah, yeah, we're doing the works that the Father gave us, not the works that man gave us. Remember, let's go back to what Paul said. We're not speaking in man's wisdom, but we're speaking in the wisdom that comes from the Spirit. Not the wisdom of man, but the wisdom of the Father. And it's the Father's wisdom that confounds man's wisdom. And man's wisdom don't understand that. Man's wisdom think they've got to do all some great religious thing and, and just absolutely just crucify themselves and bleed all over the place and, and do all manner of religious activity. And all the Father wants us to do is just obey what He told us to do. That's simple. He said, if you'll just do what I ask you to do, just do what I command you to do, I'll love you. Because if you do that, you're proving to me that you love me. Let's read on. Verse 22, Judas said to him, not Iscariot, Master, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? How is it that you'll manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Yeshua answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep or guard my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. We become the temple of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. We become not the temple made with, with stones and bricks and blocks, but we are the temple of the living God. Paul says that. He says, he says, we will come unto you or come unto him and make our abode or we will abide, join with him. He that loveth me not. Now watch this. Verse 24. He that loves me not keeps not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. Hmm, that's interesting because a lot of the argument that I hear about people not wanting to keep the commandments of God said, well, we keep the commandments of Jesus. What did Yeshua just say right there? He said, the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. And the commandments that I'm preaching to you are the commandments that the Father gave to Moses in the wilderness to the children of Israel and the commandments that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob kept and the commandments that Enoch kept and the commandments that Noah Noah kept all the way back to the very beginning, all the way back to the Garden of Eden. We find God's law, God's commandments, God's statutes, God's judgments all the way back there. And that's exactly what he wants us to do. And that's how we define how we love Yahweh. Hey, Brother Jeremy, we prayed for Ashley tonight, by the way. Appreciate you keeping us up to speed as to how she's doing. 
who loves Yahweh? Those that love Yahweh, it's defined right here. It's defined. There's the definition, the greatest definition of how we exhibit our love for Yahweh. By keeping his words, by keeping his commandments, by by focusing, hey, hey, brother, brother Jackson, by by guarding his commandments. And then the father will come unto him and will love him. There's that again. There's that conditional love. And then we will come and make our abode with him. Now, if that's not enough, let's look at some more, okay? Sometimes people say, well, that's not enough. Show me some more. Okay, John 15 and verse number 9. As the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Hmm. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love had no man than this and a man laid down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever, I command you. Wow. Hey, Miss Norris, appreciate you joining us tonight. How do we exhibit our love for the Father? By keeping his commandments and keeping his words, guarding his words. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And some may say, well, that's just not enough. Okay, all right, so let's go a little farther. And we, we've, we've read these before, but we're going to read them again. Because this is just simple, okay? I'm not trying to teach you anything real deep right now. Because Paul really, a lot of people, they try to super spiritualize what Paul writes in the book of Corinthians and what Paul writes in his letters. And it's really, it's really basic, okay? When you really get down to it, it's really basic stuff. It's simply loving God and loving others. That's simply all it is. And the way that we do it is by keeping his commandments. That's it. Simple. So in 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of Elohim perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. You say, well, that still ain't enough. Okay, go to chapter 4 of 1 John, verse 19 and 20. 1 John, verse 19 and 20. We love him because he first loved us. If any man say, I love Elohim and hateth his brother is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love Elohim whom he hath not seen? There's the two great commandments. There's the two great commandments that Yeshua mentioned in Matthew 22. Hold your finger there and let's go back to Matthew 22 and look at that again. I only read the first portion of it. Verse 37 of Matthew 22, Yeshua said unto him, Thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. John simply says, If a man say, I love Elohim and hate his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother knoweth, knoweth let's see, he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love Elohim whom he had not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth Elohim love his brother also. There's the two great commandments on which all the law of the prophets hang on. Amen. So when we talk about exhibiting our love for, for God, how do we do that? Going to church is great. Fellowshipping with other people are great. You know, that's all fine and good. Keeping yourself from sin is, is good. Keeping yourself unspotted from the world, that's very important. But are you keeping the commandments? Are you obeying the Father? Are you doing what the Father has instructed us to do? 
Are you, I mean, are we keeping the commandments? Are we being obedient? Paul's very clear. Eyes not seen, ears not heard, neither is entered into the heart of man the things which Elohim has prepared for them that love him, but they are given to us by the Spirit, revealed to us by the Spirit. If that's not enough, we continue on in chapter number 5. Verse 1, Whosoever believeth that Yeshua is the Messiah is born of Elohim, and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. Let's see, brother, brother Doug put on there, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Amen. Verse 2 of 1 John 5, By this we know that we love the children of Elohim when we love Elohim and keep His commandments. There again, the two great commandments, loving God and loving others. Verse 3, For this is the love of Elohim, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. So when we look back at what Paul's writing there in the book of 1 Corinthians, we see very interestingly, as still in his introduction, he says, let us glory, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 31, let us glory in knowing Yahweh. But then he says that nobody has seen anything that God's prepared for them except by the Spirit. And it's only for those that love Yahweh. Remember what Yeshua said? You know, br Brother Doug and I were talking last night on the uh, when I was on my way home, and you know, uh, uh, we got into a great conversation about those people that that want to follow the Torah. Now, watch. They want to follow the Torah, and they want to do all the Torah stuff, and they want to say they love Elohim, they love Yahweh, but they reject Yeshua. They deny Yeshua. They deny the Messiah. They deny the Son, of, the Son of God. They deny the Master of Glory. They deny Him. They, 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 did, they doubt that He has come. They, so much has been written about the Messiah and, and about the things in which He did, about His death, about His resurrection, about His ascension. Many witnesses over and over and over and over and over again. And there's people that want to grab a hold of the Torah and they want to follow after Yahweh, but they reject Yeshua. And the point being, those people have become enemies of the Master and enemies of our Creator because Yeshua and Yahweh are one and the same. And Paul says... Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which Elohim hath prepared for them that love him. And we exhibit our love for him by loving his word and by keeping his commandments. <clears throat> How much time I got, Miss Sharon? We'll just go by. Nine twenty-one. Okay. It's about time to come to a close. I was going to keep going. <laughs> I'd have kept going. Yeah, Miss Sharon said, I need, I need to stop. <laughs> so the question is tonight, do you really love Yahweh? You really love Him? Do you really have a desire to love Him? Are you willing to take a chance C consider this consider that the possibility that everything that not everything but mu much of what you've been taught within the local church has not been entirely correct consider that consider consider the possibility thank you miss leona consider the possibility that what we've been taught in the local church has not been entirely accurate. How about taking a chance on the truth? Take a chance on the truth. 
the Bible's very clear. God has told us to keep his commandments. And I'm just going to give you just a real quick short list of just things that we need to start with, okay? Okay? I want you to look in the book of Acts, chapter number 15, real quick. And I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to clo close this out. But Sharon, you need to give me a quick count countdown. I need, I need to know when I'm five minutes out. She's, she's got her hands on her hips. I wish you guys could see that, okay? She gave me the look. <laughs> Acts chapter number 15, and this is the argument, this is the thing going on with the Gentiles that were coming into faith, okay? And the, the Judaizers were trying to tell them that they had to do all those things, that, uh, that they had to be circumcised to be saved, and they had to do uh, dot all their uh, uh, I's and cross all their T's, uh, or they couldn't be saved. And there was a dispute. And so the council, the Jerusalem council, headed up by James, concluded this, verse 20, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols. Stop your idolatry, okay? No other gods before him. Abstain from fornication. Quit fornicating. Quit having sexual relations outside of the bonds of marriage. Quit committing adultery, okay? Abstain from things strangled. Eat clean. Start eating clean and from blood. A lot of these pagans, they, they drank blood. They drank blood. They, they, they had blood rituals and all those kinds of things. Told them four things to start with. Four things. He said, because then, verse number 21, this is why a lot of churches don't read. Verse number 21, the next verse. For Moses of old time has in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. So the, the conclusion was start with those four things because as you grow in the Lord, you're going to learn these things each Sabbath day. I want to challenge you. If you love Yahweh, then begin to search out the truth God never told us to celebrate Christmas that's a, that's a pagan false god celebration God never said celebrate Easter that's a pagan false god celebration God never told us to celebrate Halloween that's a pagan false god celebration God told us to practice Passover and practice unleavened bread and practice first fruits and practice Pentecost and practice trumpets and practice atonement and practice feast, uh, feast of tabernacles God said for us to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy the Sabbath day is the seventh day. It's Saturday, not Sunday. I challenge you to put God to the test. Test him. Test him. And see if he don't pour you out a blessing that you will not be able to hold. But you have to make that choice and ask yourself this question. Do I really love God? Do I really love God? Because remember, he ain't the one that's changing. We have to change. He's not the one that has to change. He's not the one that's going to unconditionally say, well, you don't have to do anything. I'm going to love you like you are. There's a sign at, at one of the local churches. It's, it's, it's a back to church Sunday. One of the Baptist churches, Milford Hills Baptist Church over here in Salisbury. And, and the sign says, back to church Sunday. Come as you are. And leave like you was. That's exactly the way it'll be. Because people want God to change so they don't have to. Well, God accepts me the way I am. Yes, he does. But he don't intend for you to say that way. Because we're the ones that have change. A blessing if you obey and a curse if you disobey. Do you really love Yahweh? Do you really love Yeshua, Jesus Christ? Do you really, truly love him? My hope and prayer for you is that you do. That's my prayer, is that you do. And I challenge you to examine yourself to see if you truly love God. And then if you do, then you will begin to change and not expect him to change. Amen? Let's close with our, with our blessing tonight. We've already read the Shema. 
Let's go to number chapter number six. We're going to close with the blessing. My prayer for you is that you will love him and keep his commandments. Love him and keep his commandments and see if he don't pour you out a blessing that you're not able to, that you're not able to contain. Because he says, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. Yahweh make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yahweh lift up his countenance to thee and give thee peace. Shalom, my friends. I love you. I pray for you. Pray for us tomorrow, 2, two o'clock, right here at our home, Salisbury, North Carolina, Sabbath meeting. Come have a great time. We'll be singing and preaching, getting into the word of God, studying, and of course, we do eat. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you is our prayer. See you next time.